Welcome to Fort White Alive's Harvest at Home, a celebration of youth, food, and community presented by Central Veterinary Services. I'm Marjorie Dowhouse, and I'm your host. And joining me is my co-host, Liz Wilson, the president and CEO right here at Fort White Alive. Thank you again for joining us from afar again this year. We're glad that you're here, gathered around your kitchen table with new and old friends. And yes, welcome to beautiful Fort White Farms, where we're here to celebrate food, the land it was grown on, and the people who tended it. I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered here on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Inui, Cree, Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota peoples, the birthplace of the Métis Nation, and the heart of the Métis homeland. All the food that you will enjoy tonight was grown in the gardens over there or somewhere else in Manitoba. Now let's take a deep breath to thank the land, animals, and people that grow food to help nourish our bodies and our minds. We're also here to celebrate the young people who are such a big part of the farm. We're here to celebrate their hard work, their dedication to personal growth, and every day they showed up and worked hard and learn something new. And that's who you'll be hearing from tonight. You'll be able to get to know these youth and also hear about their experience here on Fort White Farms. And all of this is possible because of you. We wanna thank you for your connection to Fort White Alive and to this farm, and for all of those who had a hand in making this such a wonderful community for the youth to thrive. So welcome here, wherever you're joining us from. Now to kick off the evening, I'd like to thank some very generous friends who helped made tonight's dinner that you're enjoying possible. Our presenting sponsor, Central Veterinary Services. Hi, I'm Dr. Samir Stewart-Altman at Central Veterinary Services. I am one of the co-owners with my partners, Dr. David Snell and Dr. Stephanie Van Dines. We are absolutely thrilled to be the presenting sponsor for this year's Fort White Harvest at Home. We are also so happy to work with Fort White, who believes in sustainability and One Health as much as we do. So enjoy your supper and cheers. Thank you, Central Veterinary Services. I know your team is out there watching this and enjoying your dinner tonight. And we want to thank you for your ongoing support of Fort White Alive and especially the farm. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our farm to your table meal, and enjoy an evening of celebration and storytelling. Hi, I'm Dharma, and I work here at Fort White Farms as the operations farm manager, and I'm surrounded by everything that we grow. Tomatoes, cucumbers, garlic, okra, and a lot of zucchini. It all goes to our 60 CSA members and to our farmers markets, and also to the event Harvest at Home. The people with me are the youth that come and work on the farm every summer, and they spend their time weeding, harvesting, packing, washing, and what they're learning is how to grow food, uh, how to take care of plants, and how to have a good time on a farm. Hi, my name is Arizona. I'm an assistant crew leader and I, this is my third summer here at the farm. Being a, an assistant crew leader it means that I have to teach the new recruits what I've learned so that they're able to follow suit and help out and help make sure that the vegetables grow successfully. Hi, my name is Faith and this is my first summer here at Fort White. Normally when we get here in the morning, we come together and talk about what we do for the day. We do the animal choice and then we start harvesting zucchini or cucumbers. My favorite thing to do here is singing while harvesting zucchini. I sing with Arizona, she's my singing partner. I have a lot of fun here with my co-workers. I like harvesting onion, that's my favorite vegetable to harvest here. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Simon. I have been working here for three summers. This, this is my third summer. And uh, yeah, I, like, I really love working at Four White Farm. And uh, my favorite plant is uh, Swiss chard. We actually have them like a lot this year. We like a lot of them. 
my plan was to go to civil engineering technology, but uh, I might, I might, like, I might do something related to agriculture also because, like, working here, like, my back home experience and working at the farm, like, for three summer, made me like have some interest in working this kind of job. Welcome back. Well, it sounds like the farm crew had a lot of fun and learned so much here. Hope you're enjoying your delicious farm to table meal with ingredients grown right here at Fort White Farm and enhanced by Manitoba Harvest, Fresh Colio and Crampton's Market. The evening would not be possible without the support of our stewarding sponsors, the cooperators, Green Drop Tree Care and Manitoba Liquor Marts and of course our presenting sponsor Central Veterinary Services. Now let's check in again with the farm crew and see what they have cooking in the kitchen. <music> Hi, I'm Owen Campbell and I'm the Kitchen Program Coordinator here at Fort White Farms. This is our commercial kitchen where the youth that we hire for our summer employment program learn basic culinary skills every summer. They learn knife safety, they do baking for our market like these cookies that you see here, they bake bread, they bake pizzas. I think what the youth like most about being in the kitchen is being able to feed their friends. So, you know, their colleagues that they work with here on the farm. They definitely love community lunch. They love planning the menu. They love bringing in their own cultural foods to that menu um, and, and watching their friends really love the food that they eat. On a typical day in the kitchen, we would normally plan our community lunch. And then when it time, the time comes to have community lunch, we would get ready, prepare it for everyone, and do the farm pizza that we make here. It's pretty good, all fresh ingredients, you know. Today we put chicken, bacon, we had a bunch of different kinds of veggies. Yeah, for example, we'd put like zucchinis. Uh, today we had like tomatoes, I believe, onions, peppers, things like that. We always let the the guests of the community lunch like get their food first. So then we always hear like everyone being like, oh, it's so good. Thank you so much for cooking. You know, it's nice. <laughs> we make fresh bread, cookies, and sometimes we just make something to eat here and just enjoy. And now I'm just trying to make garlic bouquets. I made this one yesterday. I'm trying to finish this one today. You want, you want one? You can take one home. <laughs> we kind of plan based on how much stuff we have here at farm. For example, one day we had like a lot of zucchinis, so we had a zucchini-themed lunch, and it was, it was actually really good. It went pretty well. And we're going to be making zucchini bread, and zucchini cookies, and zucchini pasta, and zucchini lasagna. <laughs> Um, we have a lot of zucchini in Manitoba. I only tried it this summer and I was like amazed by the different kind of soups and stuff you can just throw it in. It's very good. Some of the challenges that we uh, have here in the kitchen are definitely um, learning time, <laughs> how to time food properly, how to make sure that what you're cooking is done at the time you need it to be done with. So time management, I think, would definitely be the biggest thing. Speaking of, my cookies are done. <laughs> It feels very nice because it's relaxing. It's like you just hear the blades going and you know that everything's getting done. And everybody usually lets you know how far along we are in the recipe. So there's no slip ups or anything like that. Very good teamwork. <laughs> My favorite thing to do in the kitchen right now is cooking. Actually, we do the bread, the fresh, fresh bread. I love doing that and I love making soup. Now I'm learning from Owen, he's the best. I love my job because I get to work with youth, which is pretty cool. They teach me a lot of things as well. Um, and I get to make great food almost every single day and then sit down with people that I care about, my colleagues, um, both here on the farm and in the greater Fort White. And we get to eat together and that is sort of my dream. Welcome back. The kitchen crew looks like they're having a lot of fun. And I don't know about you, but looking at the food they're preparing is making me really hungry. You can learn about the youth and their experience in the yearbook in the program that's been provided in your package and also in the program you can find more information on Fort White Alive's online auction and I encourage you to bid generously because the proceeds raised will go to support Fort White Farm and help hire youth next summer to take part in this life-changing program. Live as of today, you have the first crack to bid on some items, including art, handcrafted goods, and unique experiences. 
Now, speaking of handcrafted, shout out to our growing sponsor, Handcraft Creative, who filmed and edited the live stream entertainment for you tonight. And also to our other growing sponsors, Auto Show Sales and Finance and Bomai Med. Now, keeping with the theme of handcrafted, let's check in on a new addition here at Fort White Farm. Hi, my name is uh, Ian Barnett. I'm a staff person here at Fort White Alive and I'd like to welcome you to the uh, soon to be complete Ben and Rose Puckniak Woodworking Studio here at Fort White Farms. As you know, when youth come here to Fort White, they receive training in, in small scale agriculture, gardening, uh, kitchen skills and leadership skills. It was a few years ago that we uh, added woodworking as a component to the, to the program on a, on a temporary basis. We built several uh, small rowboats out of our garage in the farm headquarters which was not really an adequate space. It was uh, pretty crowded, didn't have all the best tools. So this is going to be the future uh, woodworking studio. So you'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but this is where we'll have all our, our power tools, table saw, uh, hand tools and things like that. And so this is where the projects will be constructed and, and completed uh, by the youth. This space gives us a lot more room to, uh, to work and grow and will allow us to, to train more youth in a safe and, and comfortable atmosphere. Skills like woodworking have, uh, have great demand in the market for, for future jobs, so we thought it was a very important uh, aspect to add to our, our programming here at Fort White. The woodworking program also has great potential to expand our social enterprise, as the youth will be building items that can be uh, purchased through our gift shop or at the market here at Fort White. So it's a program we're tremendously excited about and uh, very much look forward to opening up this woodworking studio in the coming months. As you know, at Fort White, we, we lead by example when it comes to sustainability. So when we build buildings, there's certainly no exception there. We've taken extra care with the construction of this building, and we feel it's actually going to be one of the most energy efficient buildings in the province when it's complete. We're standing at the loading dock entrance here, and you can see this is the, these are the walls of the building. Standard walls on a, on a commercial building might be this thick. Ours are more than, more than double that size and that's all filled with insulation it create, and, and that insulation goes through the floor and all the way through the ceiling as well. So it creates a tremendously well insulated and air sealed building. The wood wall that we see here and on the exterior of the building, this is actually recycled, reclaimed cedar siding that we uh, removed from our interpretive center building which underwent a renovation last year. So we were able to take some of those materials and incorporate them into this new build. These are, um, of course, the windows of the building, but the windows as, as part of the passive design of, this, uh, of the building are very important. So we get the, the passive heating um, through sunlight in the cold months when the sun is low and the sun is blocked when we don't want the heat coming into the building. And that's another aspect of, of keeping the building tremendously uh, energy efficient. The doors are another special feature of the, of the structure. Um, these were actually brought over from Europe and they're, uh, they're incredibly energy efficient. You can see it's a, a very thick door, several inches thick. Uh, it's got a double sealing mechanism and uh, that pulls the, be pulls the door so it's uh, uh, very airtight. Uh, air sealing is an incredibly important component of the building. A usual uh, structure will go through several air changes an hour. This building has been measured to go through less than one air change per hour. So the, you can tell that the, the building is incredibly airtight. So no heat is being lost in the winter. No cool is being lost in the summer. And this will be a new classroom space. It'll be used both for the woodworking projects and to just expand our regular Fort White Farms programming where it always seems like we're, uh, we're, we're space is at a premium. So this gives us an extra teaching space for, for workshops. It will eventually allow us to expand to serve uh, more youth in the program. So we're not quite finished here yet, but we do want to share everything we've learned about uh, building a building in this way. We've made this uh, building so energy efficient um, because we want it to be an example for others. We're hoping that in the future, all buildings in Manitoba will be built this way. I'm happy to be here with Bob Puckniak, whose generous support has uh, allowed us to undertake the construction of the new woodworking studio. Thanks for being here today, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Can you uh, uh, tell us wh why Fort White is important to you? Well, when we were kids back in the 1950s, um, my parents, Ben and Rose, used to bring us out to the um, Fort White area for uh, some fresh air and exercise. and. Um, in that process, my dad would uh, try and 
teach us to identify the different songbirds in the area and my mom would show us which wild berries were edible, uh, you know, Saskatoons and cranberries and then again my dad would show us the animal tracks and the differences between deer and fox and rabbits and, and uh, it always ended up being a, a very nice occasion. And um, so when Marnie and I uh, had our own kids in, in the 70s, uh, we did the same thing. We'd come out with kids and, and we'd have a pleasant afternoon uh, enjoying the bush and the scenery and, and um, so we, we carried on the tradition. Very nice. It's, uh, so it's been a lifelong connection and very similar to many other families uh, in Winnipeg. Yeah, Winnipeg. like long before, you know, there was no interpretive center, there was no bison, uh, no farms, and so there's been a, a whole bunch of improvement over those years. But, uh, but yeah, we feel a, a special attachment to, to, the Fort, uh, to the Fort White area here. And, and so given our long-term relationship with, with Fort White, I was, you know, we were looking for a project to support and at the same time remember our parents. So, uh, so we're delighted to, uh, to have been able to help out uh, with this woodworking studio. Well, we absolutely can't thank you enough for, for the support. We're, we're so excited about the, the potential and, and opening this facility to, uh, to all sorts of new, new opportunities for, for youth training and it wouldn't be possible without the support of yourself and Marty. So thank you so much for making this project happen. Well, we're delighted to be involved. Thank you. Thank you. We're so excited about the future of the farm here at Fort White Alive, and a huge thank you to Bob and Marnie and their ongoing commitment to this place. It's donors like them and you that make this such a wonderful community for youth to thrive. So as we sign off, just want to one more time thank you for joining us for Harvest at Home this year. We're so grateful to have been able to share this experience with you. Now let's raise a glass and with the help of our beverage sponsors, Manitoba Liquor Marts, Drink Sense and Lake of the Woods Brewing Company, cheers. Thank you for joining us tonight for celebrating Fort White Farms and sharing in the harvest. We hope you enjoy your treats from Utopia, your farmer's son candles, and those incredible chocolate eggs from Decadence Chocolates. Before we sign off, we just want to give one more final thank you to our presenting sponsor, Central Veterinary Services, and our stewarding sponsors, Green Drop Tree Care and the Cooperators. Now let's enjoy some music from Sierra Noble. Good night. Hey folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Harvest at Home. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>
thank you very much. I'm sure you can hear these beautiful crickets and birds at home. I hope you can anyways. It's beautiful and these are, this is my favorite band. I get to play with my favorite band today. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna play some songs for you in, in this lovely open tuning because there's something about playing outside in nature that makes me want to do that. <laughs> so, this is a song that I wrote many years ago in Nashville, um, in, a, in a haunted house, um, actually just outside of Nashville, in Franklin, Tennessee. And um, my co-writer and I, Michael Logan, kind of didn't know where the song came to us from. It was one of those songs that we just felt like we were the, the vessel for it. Um, and we like to believe that this song came from uh, two people who were very in love, who maybe lived in that house together long ago. Wipe the lipstick from my mouth Took my mother's diamond earrings out Laid the dress out on the bed Laid my head on your chest Remember we said we were gonna live forever and We would paint over and ride along the wall Chase that sunset till we're blind And wake up to find If I'd known that it would end I would have paid a little more attention Memorized every look and touch And every fragment of us Remember we said Like 
like our dreams, like our lives. Remember, we said we were gonna live forever. And we would paint over and ride along the wall. Chase that sunset till we're blind. And wake up to find we are only human after all. We are only human after all. Thank you. <laughs> okay. This next one I'm going to play is uh, is one of my last full-length albums, City of Ghosts, um, which was a while ago. But um, I have some new music coming out very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but this one is called Gotta Run Fast.
I hope you all are enjoying your wonderful meal right now. Um, I'm going to play you some, some old traditional Métis fiddle tunes for you. And um, this is also one of my favorite things to do out in this, this kind of nature because this is exactly the place these tunes were played just like this, the fiddler and their feet. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for Harvest at Home. My name is Sierra Noble and I've got one more for you. I hope to see you in person again really soon. Feel free to sing along at home if you know this one. Till it's 
last night I heard that screen door sound much. Have a great evening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>